I don't have any slides. We're going to do more live demo -y things. Uh, so I apologize in advance for anything that goes wrong in live demos. Uh, if you were at Gradle Summit last year, you heard Stephen talk about uh, Python that we were using at Gradle or at LinkedIn with Gradle. Um, this is pretty helpful because we get one build tool to interact with everything. So it means that we don't have to deal with PIP's weirdnesses or Maven's weirdnesses. We can just use uh, Gradle to do all the pencil resolution and handle it all for us, which means we can also use all the plugins that we've written internally to do a bunch of things. So Ruse alluded to something and working on it sometime, we don't know when, but I figured it would be nice to show you guys something using this plugin. Uh, it does also use the new software model as one of its bases, which is kind of an interesting concept. And I'll talk a little about some of the weird things if you start developing software model plugins you'll want to look forward to. So I am just in a project that I have pre-prepared. Uh, this is an open source project I stole. It's a Zope interface, if you care, because it builds and it's really quick. Uh, as you can, if you haven't dealt with the component model yet, uh, it's a little bit different to define. So instead of defining things as plugins, and you still define plugins, but you don't define things in script and it evaluate whenever it feels like it, you kind of more do a declarative definition. So put things in this model closure and then components, pretty standard. Uh, and then there's this Python bit here. So that's telling it Gradle that I want a Python component. Here, we're gonna define that we want Python 2.6 and 2.7. Below it, you see that I have commented out uh, 3.5.1. As it turns out, that doesn't work right for my example, so I had to comment it. Uh, but this also means that you can define multiple versions of Python at one time, build multiple virtual environments, and run them in parallel. Parallel. Uh, and behind that, you say, I want some uh, distributions or binaries, I want a source disk, like any good Python person wants, so they can build it everywhere and all the time. You also have some wheels for exposing to other people. Uh, you could also add PEXs or other formats as you wanted. So, uh, and then finally, we're gonna define some sources. As it turns out, Python doesn't usually follow the normal convention that Gradle has of source main language. It does source. So here, we've, I'm just uh, showing how you can define a specific path to something. It doesn't actually affect the build at all. It just helps Gradle with its caching and making things faster. So I'm using the Gradle Nightly right now. And I'm just going to run build. Uh, it takes about 33 seconds to run. So right now we're, oh, I forgot to clean, no. See if it runs this time. So here it's provisioning virtual environments and it's gonna go through the installation of dependencies. It's doing IV dependency resolution to pull in uh, artifacts. Uses the native uh, source disk that you would normally use with any distribution. And then runs tests and you see it moved on to something else. Now it's running the other Python versions. So it's run, it ran against, uh, I forget what versions. But if I run LS. It ran against Python 2.6.9 and 2.7.10. And you see how it drops two activate files because you have two different environments that you can activate into. So I'm gonna activate into the 2.6 one. And then I'm gonna do a pip install. IPython. Pip works just like you would expect. Depending on you show up, and if I do a pip list, you see a bunch of other dependencies that showed up with it. So if I run IPython, and Z, -sh Z shell tries to be helpful, but it's not, you see that it doesn't work right, because I'm not using the right version of Python. Z uh, IPython only works with 2.7 and above. So I'm gonna deactivate, and then reactivate into 2.7 and then run the pip install again. You'll see that it actually redownloading things. So it's doing a reinstall, it's an entirely different virtual environment. I do it uh, here. 
it runs, it opens IPython correctly. So it's not ready yet, but it's kind of a cool little project. Um, does dependency management, can create some artifacts. And that's what I want to show you guys a little bit about Python. I'm sure you'll have questions later.